Since optical density with CR is no longer a factor of technique, in other words, one never takes an image that's too dark, or one never takes an image that's too light, because we control that with a simple click of the mouse and with our computer, technologists can be challenged to know what is an optimal technique to use. So you are given an exposure index. The exposure index will let you know if you're in what I would call the sweet zone for the exposure range of the imaging phosphorus plate. So let's talk for a few moments about how this exposure index works. As you know, with conventional film radiography, overexposed images tend to be dark, underexposed images tend to be light. Also, contrast, grayscale and contrast is controlled by your kilovoltage. That doesn't really apply in CR because we control all of that image brightness and darkness and image contrast with the window and leveling tool, how do we know as technologists when we've set an appropriate technique? Your ICRCO exposure index will give you that information. So let's talk about how that works, how that's reviewed, how that's applied, and how that's understood. With film, we used to communicate our technique in steps of density. You can think of the exposure index as communicating steps of density to you in these numbers here. Your exposure index will be a positive or a negative number. You can also think of it as a percentage. A 1.0 exposure index is either 1.0 positive or 1.0 negative, and it is either one full step overexposed or one full step underexposed, depending, it, depending on whether it's a positive or negative number. If it's a 1.0 positive, it will turn red and say overexposed. Adjusting your technique by reducing your MAS 100% from 20 to 10, or reducing your kilovoltage by 15%, say from 100 to 85, will reduce your exposure index one full step. Conversely, increasing it from 10 to 20 for the mass, or from 75 to 100 for the KV will increase your exposure index one full step. So your exposure index is designed to give the operating technologist an idea or a guideline as to how to set techniques. Please never use the exposure index as a mandate to repeat the image. The mandate to repeat the image is what you see as you look at the image. Now, what do we see when we've overexposed an image? What do we see when we underexpose an image? Let's, let's relate that exposure index to, to physics for a different technology, for a different application that works the same way in CR. An example, you get in your car, you turn on your favorite FM radio station, you're driving out of town, or your favorite AM station, and you're driving out of town further and further away from the antenna, what's happening? Your signal is getting weaker, weaker, and weaker. What's happening to your sound? You're getting static, more and more static, or noise in your sound. The same thing applies to a digital image. The weaker the signal, the more noise in the image. The stronger the signal, the better the image becomes. However, at a certain point, as we go higher and higher with our signal, yes, our images are looking very, very good, but we are overexposing our patients. We're using too much dose. In CR, that is called dose creep. So the exposure index is there to help us reduce, minimize, or avoid dose creep. And it's also there to help us know when we've used an appropriate amount of signal or technique in our x-ray images so that we avoid noise. Now, what do we do or what can we do if we don't have an optimal exposure index to get an optimal image? With that, I'm going to show you an underexposed image and what we can do about it. In my database here, I have an abdomen that has been underexposed. 
you will note that the exposure index indicates minus 2.39. It is red and it says underexposed. Well, that is 2.39 steps or 239% underexposed. You will also notice that this image is fairly grainy, especially when I magnify and look at the soft tissues. You see a lot of grain in this image. Well, there's something that we can do to smooth that grain out and actually improve the diagnostic quality of that image, and that is to reprocess that image using a higher noise reduction algorithm and smoothing out some of that noise and grain in the image through soft processing. So I'm going to hit the soft processing button. We're going to pause for a moment, waiting for the hourglass to finish processing and see the difference between standard and soft processing. Okay, notice a significant reduction in grain on that image and a significant improvement in the contrast on that image as I change the window and level slightly with my fine window and leveling tool. While we have not changed what we read over here for the exposure index, we have indeed improved the appearance of this image. Conversely, sharp processing would actually demonstrate more noise in this image and we're not going to use it here. We'll show you sharp processing on smaller anatomy parts because this looks really good for those little bones in the hands and the wrists and the ankles. So just to recap, as we look at these images, and we'll open up a couple more of these and look at them. Let's look at this shoulder. What do we have for an exposure index here? We have minus 0.045 on this shoulder. And we have a pretty darn good image, don't we? Because we're in the sweet zone on this exposure index. Let's look at the next one. Well, here we have one that's 211% overexposed looking pretty good to me, but we've used actually more dose than necessary. So we want to avoid that cliche of when in doubt, burn it out and monitor our exposure index to set optimum exposures.